Shalom Aleichem, my friends. The Rebbe says that there are some encounters in the Torah, some experiences in the Torah, some of the stories of the Torah that can only be understood using the Hasidic explanation and interpretation. And we've, we've, we've come across a few of them in our running commentaries, and here's another one. Beautiful thought. Chaim Alevsky here, Chabad Family Programs of the West Side. This week's Parsha, Toldot, is a Parsha that talks about Yitzchak, our forefather Yitzchak. The Torah tells very little about him, aside from the fact that he was a well digger, and in a previous running commentary we spoke about that, where Yitzchak digging wells meant that he uncovered the good the wellsprings, the enthusiasm within each person. And he didn't give up, even after the Plishtim, the Philistines, stuffed up his wells and filled them with dirt. So the Rebbe says, don't ever give up on yourself or on others. But that was a previous year's commentary. This year we're talking about Yitzchak planted. It says, Vayizra Yitzchak Shanahahi, and Yitzchak planted. Words from the Torah. On that year, in that year, Vayimta Ba'aretzahi Rashanahahi, and he found in that year, in that place, Mea Sha'arim, a hundred times, a hundred measures. Vayevrachayo Hashem, and Hashem blessed him. What is a simple meaning, simple translation is? that our forefather Yitzchak, the son of Abraham, the second Jew, the first one born a Jew, he planted and he succeeded. He planted in a, in a land in a time that was difficult to, for harvest, in a place that was uncommon for good harvest. But he found Bashanahi in that year, Mea Sha'arim, 100 times the amount that was expected. And Rashi, our classic biblical commentator, brings the Midrash and explains that why does the Torah tell us this? To tell us, number one, that he was ex- extraordinarily successful, a hundred times more than expected. And number two, is that Yitzchak was calculating, the Torah tells us, the Maser, the tithing. The Torah tells us that, the Rambam says, that Yitzchak initiated the concept of giving 10% to charity, of tithing. So the Torah is telling us that he measured, he produced 100 times the expected measurements in order to tell us that he calculated his tithing, his miser, his tzedakah, his charity from that. That's one midrash. Comes another midrash of equal stature from the times of the Tanaim, of the Mishnaic. Uh, sages. Uh, this is brought down in the Pirka de Rabbi Eliezer. And he says, says, Yitzchak Zara Chas Vishalom. This is an emphatic statement which is uncharacteristic. He says that to say Yitzchak Zara Dagan, to say that Yitzchak planted grain, Chas Vishalom. He uses the word Chas Vishalom, which means heaven forbid, God forbid, to say that Yitzchak planted grain. What was he, a farmer? Yitzchak was a holy man, and he learned Torah, did mitzvahs. What was he doing farming? So the Midrash clearly says that Yitzchak did not plant, but the Torah says, Vayizra Yitzchak, and Yitzchak planted, and he produced Mea Sharim, etc. He produced a hundred times as much. So he explains there that Zorea Tzedakos, Yitzchak planted charity. There's a verse in the Torah, in the Tehillim, I think, is Zorea Tzedakos, when you plant charity. And he explains, Yitzchak took a calculation. He calculated from the benefits of the year, and he, he divided up the portions accordingly, gave 10% to God, and he kept the rest. Now, the Rebbe takes this idea to task, and he says that, in the world of Nigla, in the revealed teachings of the Torah, 
we can have different opinions in various details, but never a completely different story. It's called a svara hafucha. It says you never have something that's at a, the antithesis. No one person says yes, and another person says absolutely not. So over here is a unique situation where one midrash tells us Yitzchak planted and he sowed, he watered, he harvested, and he measured, and he gave tzedakah from that. He went through all the details, all the necessary details to give tzedakah and to do his miser, including the planting, from the planting and on. Another midrash tells us Yitzchak planting grain? Absolutely not. It's impossible. So the Rebbe beautifully reconciles this with a Hasidic explanation, with Hasidic teaching. And he dives into this idea of Maiser. It says the Rambam tells us, Maimonides tells us about our obligation to give, to tithe, to give 10% of our produce or whatever we have, our belongings, to tzedakah. And he says, Kol chelev lahashem. All the fat, the fatty, juicy parts, elements of our belongings belong to God. Meaning, simply speaking, when somebody gives tzedakah, whether it's in their fields, in the produce, or the charity, the money that they have, the Bitcoin, or the belongings, the food, the clothing, the furniture, your real estate, whatever you're going to donate, kol chelev lahashem, the best part you give to God, and the rest you keep for yourself. You give the best, keep the rest. That's what the Rambam says about tzedakah. You give the best and you keep the rest. Now, the Rebbe talks about this and says that this is something, a standard, that applies to everyone, to every Jew. And he brings down the Tanya, where the Tanya explains that every Jew has, is a, com a composite, a combination of body and soul. And each of us have different measures of which one is more in control in different times, the body or the soul. Says the Rebbe that in the 32nd chapter of Perak Lamed Beis, which is the lave, the heart of Tanya, the Altar Rebbe says that in order to love your fellow Jew, you need to have your soul primary concern in your mind and your body secondary. Only then can you love, because on a body level, we're all divided. On a soul level, we're all the same. So the Rebbe applies this idea also to tzedakah and to every other area in our lives. He says the, the standard Jew's service to God is where we're supposed to make our soul primary. That should be the most important thing to us. But our body also has, the Rebbe says, a metzias. There's some consideration to our body too. And he says when he gives tzedakah, when a person gives tzedakah, yes, he gives kol chelev lahashem, he gives the best to God. But the nine other portions, the 90% that he keeps, he appreciates it. And he wants it, and he keeps it, and he derives pleasure from it. So the best he gives to God, but the 10% the is God's, but the 90% is mine, and I appreciate that too. That, says the Rebbe, is a, is a standard Jewish service. And the version of service is called kol ma'asecha l'shem shemaim. When you do things, you do them with heaven in mind, for heaven's sake. You're going to do a business, you're going to give 10% of it to charity. You have God in mind in your actions. However, says the Rebbe, we can't apply the same standard and paradigm to Yitzchak. Yitzchak Avinu, our forefather Yitzchak, it says about our forefathers in the Zohar, it says, Ha'avos, forefathers, Hain Hain Hamerkava. They are the chariot. They are the chariot of God. What is a chariot? You have a rider, you have a horse, and you have the chariot. The chariot is the place where the people sit or carries the belongings. The chariot has no mind of its own. 
The chariot has no will of its own. The chariot only follows instructions, only follows directions completely subserviently. That is a chariot. It's a perfect vehicle for the energy that flows into it. It's got no obstructions. There's no blockage there. It does what it's told in a perfect chariot. The Avos, the forefathers were a perfect chariot, says the Rebbe, that the Midrash, Pirkei de Rebbe Eliezer, understanding that Yitzchak was a holy man. He was a holy man. It's a beautiful song like that. Parenthetically, I think it's Yitzchak Bitone. You can search it up in, in the 80s, I think. He had a musical gig called Magama. Moshe, yes, Yitzchak, Yitzchak Bitone. I'm not sure if they did it together or not, but he has a song about the Baal Shem Tov. He was a holy man, such a holy man. The Baal Shem Tov was the name he had. And you could look that up on your own. So, Yitzchak, says the Midrash, was a holy man. He was a Merkava. He was a chariot to God's will and to God's energy. He had no desire of his own. It's impossible to say that Yitzchak planted grain. A chariot doesn't plant grain. A chariot doesn't do things for himself or herself. A chariot only does the divine will. So what did Yitzchak do? Says the Midrash, Yitzchak gave tzedakah. Yitzchak proportioned the miser, the 10% out of his belongings for tzedakah. That's all he really did. Now, did he also plant? Where did he get that 10% from? There was another 90%. Where did that come from? So the Rebbe says yes to the untrained eye to the Philistines observing to the king uh, Avimelech and Fichel, Yitzchak planted, he watered, he reaped, he harvested, he measured, he did all of those things, but it wasn't his intent. He wasn't intending to plant. Yitzchak was intending to give tzedakah, to give 10% of his earnings to God. Now in order to get to that, there's a process that needs to take place. So he did plant, but he didn't plant grain. He gave tzedakah. In order to give tzedakah, you also need to plant. So it was a perspective. It was his intent that is in play over here. The Midrash that says that he planted and he watered and he reaped and he harvested is talking about the actions that Yitzchak did that were observable to an untrained eye. The Perke de Rabbi Eliezer, the other Midrash that says Yitzchak planted grain that he dug on Zara chas v'shalom. It's impossible, heaven forbid, heaven forfend, heaven forbid to say that Yitzchak planted grain. That is telling us that Yitzchak wasn't a planter. He was a mitzvah man. He was God's man. He was a Merkava, a chariot. And the Rebbe says that he gave, we have two other examples, similar ideas. He says when a person puts on a talis, he says we wrap a talis during our prayer for our prayer service. He says, why do we wrap a talis? Beautiful thing, I never really knew. I knew the idea that we're wrapping ourselves in God's embrace and God's hug. But the Rebbe took it a notch further. He said that uh, the mystical teachings command us to envelop ourselves in Kabbalah's Ol Malchus Shamaim, in accepting the yoke of heaven, in accepting God's will and embrace. Says the Rebbe, when we come to prayer, we need to employ our thought, speech, and action in this Kabbalat al Machut Shemaim, in this accepting, our embracing God, as it were. So we think about the words of prayer, we think about our connection with God while we're praying, that takes care of thought. We say, we shout the word Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, and that takes care of our speech. What about action? Says the Rebbe, we take a talus and we wrap ourselves in that, in the talus, in that godly embrace. And that's the action in which we connect with God during our prayer. So no one 
will ever say, oh, I like the feeling of this woolen talus on me and therefore I do it. Therefore I put it on. No, it doesn't go that way. You say, I need to connect with God. I need to embrace myself in God's hug, in God's respect, in God's awesomeness. Therefore I need a talus. So the talus becomes secondary to the primary intent of connecting with God. What are we doing now? Am I wrapping a talus? No, I'm connecting with God. How? Through wrapping a talus. So too, says the Rebbe, with the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol, the high priest in the temple, he wore these fancy clothing, silver clothing, white linen, the breastplate, and uh, a seat's uh, a head plate with all these precious stones. Uh, who would ever think? No one would ever say that the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, is dressing up fancily so that his friends will praise his beautiful dress, his amazing fashion and style. Nonsense! It was the Rebbe quoted, Olam Shana Nefesh. It was the holiest place in the Kodesh HaKadashim, the Holy of Holies. It was the holiest time, Yom Kippur, and is the holiest person at the time, the Kohen Gadol. There's none of that nonsense, none of that fashion happening. Excuse my fashion noble friends. But the Kohen Gadol was thinking, this is a mitzvah. In the Torah it says, wear this so that you connect to God in a certain way that God wants. And that's the only reason the Kohen Gadol wore it. Was it beautiful? Was, did he have to actually wear the diamonds and the, and the jewelry? Of course, but that wasn't his intent. His intent wasn't to dress up. That's what you do on Purim. And others do it on Halloween. But the Kohen Gadol, his intent was to fulfill a mitzvah, just do what God said. Said the Rebbe, the same thing applies, same paradigm applies to Yitzchak planting. When Yitzchak planted, there was no planting intended. There was tzedakah, the 10% that he wanted to give to God intended. Oh, you need to plant in order to get there, so he did the planting too. This is the way the Rebbe reconciles the two Midrashim through the Hasidic interpretation, the Hasidic understanding. And the Hasidic, the Rebbe says, is the light. It's actually the light of Yechida, the light of Mashiach. And that's why we're learning it now, to prepare ourselves in the world for the coming of Mashiach for a better place. And the Rebbe concluded this part of the talk saying that, yes, and at the end, Yitzchak earned a hundred times more than expected. Because when somebody does something in the mode of operation that Yitzchak did, which was called Bechol Derachecha Da'ehu, in all your ways, in every thought, speech, and action, you know God, you do God, not just that you do things for the sake of God, but you, in every fiber of your being, is a, is a godly expression. In all your ways, know him, know God, says the Rebbe. That brings extraordinary blessings in the physical, material sense too. Therefore, Yitzchak earned a hundred times more than he expected. And if we know the story, if the Rebbe told it to us, that means we can do it too. Actually, I don't know if we can do it, because most people are, the Rebbe says is, Kol ma'asecha yu l'shem shemaim. Your deeds should be for the sake of heaven. Bechol terachecha ta'ehu. The idea of knowing God in every fiber of your being is for a select few. But because we know about it, we should strive to it. That's our goal. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Please share.